Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discussion we considered aircraft as a rigid body which has six degrees of freedom in space and we classified the motion of the aircraft into two phases the first one is the longitudinal case and the second is lateral directional case and the longitudinal case is a single vertical plane motion where it can translate along the body x and body z axis and all associated with a rotation about y axis called pitching moment right and we also looked at what is lateral directional motion which is which involves two rotations and one translation along y axis and the rotations here are rolling motion as well as yawing motion which is about x axis and z axis respectively right so we have an aircraft So, let us define an axis with respect to which all the components of this aircraft are mounted. Let us say this has fuselage reference line, right. So, we will use this fuselage reference line while talking about stability of an aircraft here. So, now let us consider a body axis system. So, we have wing, yeah, let us quickly go through this major components of this aircraft. Say so we have wing, right, and a horizontal tail, and a vertical tail, right. So, these are the three major components which are indeed fixed components of aircraft along with the propulsion system, right. So, and we also have some small moving surfaces that are attached to this aircraft, fixed components, right. So, these moving surfaces when deflected at certain angle with respect to the flow, right, say this aircraft is moving at certain velocity v infinity, making an angle of attack alpha with respect to this free stream velocity, right. So, when we deflect this control surface with respect to this flow at, to, at certain angle, so this will alter the local aerodynamic forces which generates moment, right, about Cg. Let us say this is my Cg, if this is my Cg. So, the change in aerodynamic force after the CG or uh, at, a, after, at an offset location with respect to CG will produce a moment because of it, right. So, this moment is you, because of this moment the aircraft orientation changes, right. Orientation in space changes. So, the surfaces with which we control the aircraft orientation is known as control surface, right. So, the control surface on the horizontal plane is elevator. Uh, horizontal tail, uh, which is on the vertical tail is rudder and on wings we have ailerons and we also have some high lifting devices called flaps attached to the wings. Our flaps are majorly to enhance the lifting characteristics while take off and landing whereas, ailerons, rudder and elevator are to control the orientation of the aircraft throughout the flight. So, we call them as control surfaces. So, so, these are the moving components here, right. And then, yeah, of course, we have propulsion system either a propeller driven or a jet driven aircraft or a UAV, 
right? And we said that we have six degrees of freedom of uh, motion here. So let us consider the origin of this coordinate system at the CG itself. So which we discussed during the previous course, and let the x-axis be pointed towards the nose of this aircraft from the CG location. So this is our x-axis of this body coordinate system, and then we have z-axis which is towards the undercarriage, right? So let O be the origin of this coordinate system which is coinciding with the CG of the aircraft. And then so let Z be towards the undercarriage and then we have, so we, we are considering a right handed coordinate system. So Z is in the down, downward, so X cross Y is Z. So what we have is the second axis which is Y axis here. Right. Is, which is into this board here. Right. So we have defined aircraft motion in two modes. So the first one corresponds to longitudinal motion. You can also say this as a single plane motion, right? So for an aircraft or a UAV, we assume there exists a plane of symmetry. What exactly it is? We have a vertical plane about which the geometry, though it is, it doesn't look symmetric here, but in reality we have the geometric, uh, we call it symmetry about that vertical plane as well as mass distribution, the symmetry and mass distribution. Okay. So, if the aircraft is if the aircraft is moving in this in that particular vertical plane, or the motion is constrained to that particular vertical plane, or the plane of symmetry, we call such a motion corresponds to longitudinal motion, right? So the aircraft can translate along x-axis and z-axis, which corresponds to this vertical plane of symmetry, right? So there are two translational motions, and it can also have a rotational motion in this vertical plane. So the aircraft is not crossing this vertical plane. So the motion is still constrained to this vertical plane even during that rotation, right? So we have translation along x. So in longitudinal plane, we have three degrees of freedom to translation. So which is along x axis and z axis, right? and one rotation. So rotation is due to moment as we discussed. So we have pitching moment which is the rotation about y axis, right? So what we have is pitching moment which is given by Q. So the pitching moment is, so for a longitudinal motion, what we have is, so let u be the translational velocity along x and w be the translational velocity along z axis and say v be the translational velocity along y axis. Now we, what we have is, so you have u, w and u, w and Q, right? So the corresponding, what, what is Q is the corresponding pitch rate, right? The rate at which it is the aircraft is changing its pitch orientation. So because of this pitching moment, say m, let this pitching moment be m in the longitudinal plane, denoted by capital M, which is given by half rho v square s c m, where c m is non-dimensional pitching moment coefficient multiplied by the characteristic length along this longitudinal axis which is the mean aerodynamic chord of this wing, right? So you can, right. so this pitching moment creates a change in orientation and the corresponding change is or the orientation change in theta, right? So we have change because we have a rotation about y axis which change the which changes the orientation of this aircraft given by theta and the rate at which this theta is changing is q right 
when there is no other uh, rotation involved. So, Q is the pitch rate, we call it as pitch rate, theta is the corresponding pitch orientation. So, u and w are the translational velocities here. So, how can we generate this pitching motion? How this moment is generated? We know if we can generate a force at an offset distance from the CG in the longitudinal plane that can create a moment here, right. So, about y axis if I have to produce a moment then I have to produce a force in this vertical plane at an offset to the CG. So, we have a control surface for this longitudinal uh, control called elevator, right. When you deflect an elevator, it produces, a, it changes the aerodynamic force there, which produce a moment about the CG, right. So, the, the corresponding deflection at this control surface, let us say if I take the cross section of this tail, So, this particular attachment is a moving surface for this horizontal tail, right, which is a shorter version, a smaller version of this wing, right. And in general, this is a symmetric wing, we will discuss why it is. So, when we deflect this particular control surface, say if we deflect this control surface down, right. So, this deflection obstructs the flow here, you can say changes the camber of the aerofoil or you can say you obstruct the flow, right. So, the flow gives a reaction in the upward direction. So, this produces a force, you know, net force upward direction. So, about CG, this force produces a moment, right, pitch down moment here, pitching down, right. So, let us also uh, define the convention here. So, about y axis, so if you stretch your thumb along the positive y axis, the curl of your fingers will give you the corresponding positive rotation, right. So, pitch up is positive, so nose up. What is the positive rotation about Y? If the aircraft rotates its nose up, right. So, whatever the moment that helps the aircraft to rotate its nose up is called positive moment, right. Corresponding moment is the positive moment and if the aircraft is rotate, uh, rotates its nose down due to that moment, we call it as pitch down moment, right and it is considered negative. So, and Q is considered positive when it is pitching up, when the th rate is changing in the po like uh, with the nose up direction and theta is also considered positive when the aircraft nose is up, right. So, so pitch up is positive. So, for a moment is positive when it is pitch up, right, which is nose up and this moment is negative if it is pitch down or nose down. Okay. So, similarly we have uh, lateral directional motion. So, any motion that cuts this vertical plane of symmetry is known uh, is correspond, uh, corresponds to a lateral direction, corresponds to this lateral directional motion. So, what are the, all the possible cases? Translation along y axis. So, this aircraft has to cut this plane of symmetry. Say, let this blackboard be the vertical, so this board be the vertical plane of symmetry. So, aircraft moving in and out of this aircraft, sorry, of this uh, blackboard is, is translation uh, along y axis and this, uh, this corresponds to lateral directional motion. So, it has again 3 degrees of freedom, where the first degree of freedom is due to translation. Along y axis and you have 2 degrees of freedom into, uh, by, by means of rotation here. So, one rotation can be the wings 
rolling, right? Rolling up and down. And the rotation about x axis is known as rolling motion, right? So, and the positive rolling, uh, uh, and the positive roll is given by, so what we have is roll about x axis, and we have pitch about y axis, and your about z axis. So, so the positive roll is given by stretch your thumb along the positive x axis and the curl of your finger will give you the direction of positive roll. So, corresponding rate is the positive, the roll rate here given by P, right. So, what you have is roll and yaw, right. So, these two are rolling motion and yawing motion are due to rotations right so which are caused by moments so the corresponding moment about x axis is known as rolling moment so rolling moment is given by is rolling moment so is represented by small l right which is half rho v square s b times c c l where C L is the coefficient of rolling moment and B is the span of this, span of the wings, right. So, C L is coefficient of rolling moment and B is span of wings. And we also have a moment about Z axis which makes which makes the aircraft to rotate about this particular axis that will, uh, yeah, that will help to, yeah, orient the nose in the horizontal plane, right. So, that change the orientation of this aircraft in the horizontal plane. So, that is known as yawing motion. So, it is again or it is due to, so this, that particular motion is known as yawing motion. So, this is rolling motion, which is rotation about x axis and rotation about z axis. So, rolling motion, yeah, z axis is yawing motion and is given by the corresponding yaw rate is given by r, right. And it, so due to this, uh, it results in a orientation, change in orientation along in the horizontal plane, right. So, the aircraft knows initially say along this particular direction. Now, due to a rotation about yaw axis or uh, say z axis, the aircraft nose is now oriented in a different direction. So, this particular change in orientation is given by xi, right. So, under uh, no other rotation, so this xi dot is equals to r, okay. That is single plane rotation. So, xi dot is equals to r and the positive yaw is given by the right wing going back, right. So, if you stretch your thumb along the positive z axis, the curl of your fingers will give you the corresponding positive rotation, where the right wing going back is no, is, uh, is corresponds to a positive yaw, yaw moment, yawing moment, right. So, yeah. And right wing going down is positive rolling moment, okay. So, stretch your thumb along positive x, the corresponding curl of your fingers will give you the rotation, positive rotation of roll. So, yawing moment, so which is given by capital N, which is half rho v square dynamic pressure times the area will give you the force in the corresponding non dimension force coefficient times B, reference, reference length here. Right, where Cn is the coefficient of yawing movement. Right. Now, what will be the positive uh, control surface deflections? So, the direction in which, so the, say, let us say we deflate a control surface, and if that control, if that deflection produces a corresponding negative moment, right, then we consider that particular deflection as positive. For example, in case of elevator, stretch your thumb along positive y axis again, right, y axis, 
and the curl of your fingers will give you the corresponding first rotation here. So this, so elevator moving down, so this particular, so this was the reference and now we have deflected it downwards, right? So say, say this is the current deflection of this elevator, okay? This particular angle is known as delta E, when you deflect it down, there is some upward force, right? Because of the change in camber here, there will be increased lift at the same, like for the same angle of attack that we are seeing, right? Or you can say, you are, we, are, we are obstructing the flow, right? So that flow will give you a reaction as an upward force. And this change in force at the tail will produce a moment here, right? So this moment will be rotating the aircraft nose down. So nose down is negative moment. So pitching, mo so the moment that you have is negative pitching moment, isn't it? So when you have, if the deflection contributes towards negative pitch, corresponding negative moment, right? So then we consider that as positive deflection. Delta E is positive when it is deflected downwards, and negative when it is deflected upwards. So you can see, so If this is delta E, then it is negative, right? So elevator is what uh, creates the orientation control along the pitch axis, isn't it? In the longitudinal plane. So controlled by elevator here, right? So the corresponding moment that uh, is generated due to elevator deflection is a pitching moment, isn't it? So if this elevator produces a negative pitching moment, deflection of this elevator helps to uh, helps the aircraft with a negative moment then we say that particular deflection is positive deflection. Now similarly, we have ailerons here. So when we deflect an aileron, right, uh, so, so the deflection, uh, so the rotation, the corresponding rotation will be about x-axis. Why? Because with respect to CG, we have two uh, ailerons on the both the wings, right, at an offset location along y-axis. So when there is a force, upward force, at an offset, y-offset, that creates a rolling moment, right. Let us say this is my aircraft, that is the nose of the aircraft and this is, uh, or say this is the uh, nose and that is the tail. Say I have one wing here, let us say I have, I have a wing here, right? So, so this, this is my nose and uh, these are my wings, okay? So I have one control surface here and there, there is another control surface here. So we have two ailerons located on the wing. Right, so one on the right and the one on the left wings or one on the port side, the other one is on the starboard side, right? So when we deflect this particular aileron, and again we see it is located towards the tip of the wing, right? So it is, and this aileron, when deflected, will produce a force, right? Uh, so when I deflect, let us say, stretch your thumb along the post to x axis, now say the x axis is towards the nose here. So the corresponding curl of your fingers will give the corresponding positive rotation of the control surface as well. Not only the rotation of the aircraft about that axis, but also the control surface rotation. So now, so my, my fingers are pointing towards downward motion of this particular control surface. When I deflect this downward, what happens is it produces a force upward, isn't it? So, so these two ailerons are deflected in opposite direction. When I deflected that uh, right aileron down, so the left aileron will be deflected upward, right? So this is how in general the convention is. And the average of these two deflections is the actual control surface deflection of the ailerons, right? So when you deflect this up and this down, right? So when you, when you deflect it down, we have an upward force. When you deflect it up, you have a downward force. So this upward force, will contribute towards a negative moment. Even the downward force from here uh, multiplied by this uh, offset distance contributes towards a negative moment, right? So the positive deflection is deflecting right aileron downwards, right? So if we deflect this downwards, deflect this aileron down, uh, let us say this is the new location of the deflection. If we deflect this downwards, right? If you deflect it down, then we say this is positive. So here, uh, if I take a cross section, the 
if I take a cross section there, so see this is this is my wing section and this is a corresponding control surface attached to this wing section. Right. So if I deflect this downward, the right the right aileron. So if I If I deflect this aileron downward, so I consider this deflection as positive delta A. On the other hand, when I deflect it up, right, so if I deflect, so let us say, so this is again, this is my nose. So if I deflect this up, this the aileron will change the local aerodynamic force there, right. So the resultant local aerodynamic force will be acting downward, right. And then when I deflect that up, I have to deflect this down, that is how the convention uh, for this aileron is. If I deflect this down, so I pro uh, this will produce an upward force, so that will produce a positive rolling moment. So the downward force and the upward force, right, so multiplied by the corresponding moment arm here will produce a positive rolling moment. So positive rolling moment is right wing going down. So, I say this is my right wing and this is my left wing. So, positive deflection is right wing going down, right. And if I have to consider rudder here, so if you look at from the top view, so if you, if you look at from this, from this top view, right. So, the rudder cross section will be Again, it is a symmetric tail, symmetric vertical tail. So, this is how the rudder looks like and then it is attached with a small moving surface called rudder, right. That is what we discussed just now. And when you deflect this rudder, it has to produce the corresponding yawing moment, right. So, this the usage of rudder is to change the orientation in the horizontal plane. We generally call it as heading, right. We try to change the heading of this aircraft by deflecting this rudder. So, which direction, uh, if uh, what should be the deflection of this rudder, so that it will produce a negative moment towards the left or towards the right. Yeah. So, when you deflect this rudder towards the left, what happens? I deflect this rudder towards my, yeah, towards me, let us say. If I, if this is the control surface, if I deflect this rudder towards me, so this produces a force into the board, right. So, that force acting at an offset distance with respect to CG. So, it has a longitudinal offset here as well as vertical offset, but let us talk about the longitudinal act offset here. So, this longitudinal offset and the multiplied with that uh, force that is produced by the rudder creates a yawing moment, right. So, that yawing moment is negative, right. So, it is rotating left wing out, right, left wing back. So, left uh, the yawing moment that rotates the left wing back is negative yawing moment, that is what we just discussed. So, that means when the rudder deflection is producing a negative yawing moment, the corresponding deflection of the rudder is known as positive, right, is considered to be positive. So, if I, if, if I have this rudder deflected towards left side, right, here, that means what is? So, if you place it like this, uh, you just translate it and place it like this. So, if you deflect this outside, right, so then it is considered as positive delta r. So, positive delta r results in negative n, negative yawing moment, right. So, what we can conclude from here, positive delta e produces negative pitching moment, right. And uh, positive, okay. So, positive rudder deflection will produce negative yawing moment and positive aileron deflection produces negative rolling moment, right? isn't it? So, what is positive elevated deflection? Down. Deflecting it down. So, the positive de corresponding positive deflection is deflecting it down, right. So, here it is towards left. So, when you are uh, 
when you're facing the aircraft from from the tail, right? When you're facing the aircraft from the tail, so uh, then the corresponding deflection towards rudder, deflection towards left side is considered positive. Right? Similarly, so aileron deflection right down. So right aileron down. So if I deflect this right aileron down, that is considered as positive aileron deflection. And in general, this is taken as average. No, the uh, aileron deflection in general is average of this value plus, uh, I mean, left side and right side aileron deflection value. So, if you want to talk about the flying characteristics of this aircraft, first we need to talk about an important property called stability of this aircraft, right? So, stability is a property of equilibrium state, right? And we have defined earlier what is equilibrium, and we all know it is a state about which resultant forces and moments are zero. So, if you want this aircraft to fly, right? first of all, we need to talk about whether the aircraft can fly or not. So, so stability is the concept that talks about whether the air, about the flying qualities of this aircraft. Right? So, stability is a property of equilibrium right? and equilibrium is a state about which resultant forces and moments are zero. So, what we, what we are going to talk about is stability So, as I mentioned, it is a property of equilibrium, right. So, what is equilibrium? When we say body is in equilibrium, So, when the resultant forces and moments acting on the body at that particular state are 0, right. So, we say equilibrium corresponds to it is a state of system about which resultant forces and moments are 0 or no force no net forces and moments acting on the system right so let us consider the following three cases just to talk about uh, uh, the the equilibrium state what what are the various equilibrium states right so we should First, consider uh, an example. So let's let's talk about that with the help of this example. So let's consider a concave up, right, surface, and let's place a ball on this particular surface. Let this point be O, right? See, so this one is on K up, right. At the same time consider another surface on which the ball is again resting, right. Let this position or the location be O prime, right, O prime. So, this is convex up, So, let us assume this has a flat surface, right, and the same ball is placed on this flat surface here. Let this location or position be O double prime. So, this is on flat surface. So, let us understand what are various uh, types of equilibrium with the, with the help of this example. So, in all these cases, if you observe, the ball is at rest, that means the resultant forces and moments acting are 0 which implies the ball is at equilibrium in all the three cases irrespective of their of the surface on which it is resting in all the three cases the ball is at equilibrium right in the first case so when we displace this uh, ob ball from this equilibrium 
let us see what happens in this different cases. Right. Now, how can we displace this with a gentle push, isn't it? So, let us give such a gentle push for this case phi where the ball. So, due to this push, the ball will try to roll up the surface, isn't it? It will try to go up the surface here and then it may reach a location say A. So, this corresponds to the point where the velocity of this ball becomes 0. right? And once it becomes 0, then what happens is, we know it will come down, right? it will come down towards O and then it will overshoot O and may reach point B. So, the same ball may reach point B. So, again B corresponds to 0 velocity. After that, again it may start moving back towards O and this oscillation continues. Right? So, at some point, let us say, once the uh, disturbance is dissipated, right? so this or damped, this particular ball will try to reach at or attain this part point O, which is the initial equilibrium state. Right? So, that particular equilibrium is known as or uh, is, is defined as a stable equilibrium. So, consider the second case. So, we still uh, we uh, and uh, the, the ball is at uh, equilibrium which is O prime here right. So, when you displace this ball what happens is it will try to roll down the surface, it will try to move the surface completely. So, it so it may not come back to its O prime right. So, even so it is same case like even if you uh, displace to the other side. So, it the ball may not come back to this O prime, right. So, one so the system here the ball is not able to attain the initial equilibrium which is O prime, right. So, in this particular equilibrium is defined as unstable equilibrium for this system, right. So, in the third case we have the we have a ball here. So, when you displace this what happens it will translate to a new location and try to attain a new equilibrium let us say O triple prime, right. So, in this case it is not coming back to the new equilibrium, but it is trying to attain another So, sorry it is not coming back to the previous equilibrium O double prime, instead it is trying to attain new equilibrium O triple prime. So, such a case is no, so uh, such a case is defined as neutrally stable equilibrium. Okay. So, with this let us define what is stability. It is the ability of the system to reattain the initial equilibrium. So, once you disturb it, disturb the system from that initial equilibrium, it should have the ability to retain that equilibrium state, right. Such a system we call, if the system have that property then we say it is a stable system, right. So, for us to understand about this stability we need to talk about, so for, for in order to define the stability of the system we need to talk about two cases called static stability and dynamic stability. So, so in this case in the first case see the system is stable here right that is why the equilibrium we said stable equilibrium. So, the ball tries to oscillate about this O and finally reaches O here. Right. The same, so in the other case we call it as unstable equilibrium and the third one is neutrally stable equilibrium, right. So, where in the second case it is not able to get back to that initial equilibrium state. So, it is not stable, the system is not stable here, right. Here the system is neutrally stable. Now, what is static stability? 
So whenever uh, in this particular example, whenever this ball reaches to a maximum or uh, say zero velocity location or the maximum location or the zero velocity location here, it will try to return back towards the initial equilibrium point. So whether it stops there or not, we are not worried. But at each end, if you look at this extreme points, at each and every time, it has a tendency to move back towards this equilibrium location, initial equilibrium. Right? So that initial tendency to come back towards this equilibrium is known as static stability. It is a initial tendency to return. equilibrium right so what is dynamic stability so generally dynamic stability talks about the time history of motion of the system once disturbed from the equilibrium right it talks about how long it takes for the body to reach the equilibrium or whether it reaches equilibrium or not. So in, in order to understand this better, consider this example. Right? Consider this slope, right? so a slope so, so, uh, surface with slope right? and there is an abrupt uh, obstruction towards the end of this slope. Now let us say initially we place this ball here on the surface at this junction. Okay. Now it is in equilibrium definitely we know that. And once we displace this to a new location say let us say this is O and this is say O prime. Right. Once you displace it so the ball will try to automatically come back towards this equilibrium isn't it. So if, you, if I plot displacement with time, say this is my equilibrium, see. what I can notice is, so this is my equilibrium, I am initially, initially this is at equilibrium, I am trying to take this to, a, to another location, I am trying to displace it and then leave that object, right. So what it does is, it will try to achieve this equilibrium with time, right. So such a system or such a process through which it achieves the equilibrium is known as subsidence. So let us consider the other case. Again here we are talking about time history of motion once we disturb, right. So that pertains to dynamic stability, okay. Isn't it? We are talking about, so the, this is the initial amplitude. So at each and every time, this initial amplitude of displacement is decreasing with time, right? So this particular value is keep decreasing with time. And consider the other case. Let us say we place this. object here. Let us say somehow we, we made this ball stand at this particular location, right. Let us say the initial part may be a bit flat compared to this curve, okay. So this particular equilibrium may be O, right. So once you displace this to a new location here, to O prime, what happens is this ball will try to roll off this surface. So again if you plot this particular, uh, so say let us let's assume the magnitude of displacement is same where we have displaced to this particular location. So what happens is with time the displacement increases, right. It keep, So what do you mean by displacement here? So it is offset from the initial uh, equilibrium location, right. So with time it is moving towards the equilibrium that means the displacement is keep decreasing. In this case the displacement is keep increasing is keep on increasing, right, why because it rolls off, rolls off the surface and the distance between 
O and O prime is increasing, right. So, this particular, uh, yeah. so here you can see, so this particular initial displacement is, is nowhere reducing, in fact, as the time progress, it is increasing, right. So, this particular case is known as a divergence. So, with time it is not able to reach the equilibrium position, so we call it a divergence. So, it is dynamically unstable. So, if it, with time if the object reaches the equilibrium, then we say it is dynamically stable, right. So, for a stable system, it is essential, it should satisfy both dynamic stability as well as st static stability as well as dynamic stability, right. Now, let us consider uh, a different case. So, this is, these are not uh, non-oscillating motions, right, but aircraft is a, uh, so we can consider it as a second order system. So, in general have an oscillation, oscillatory motion, right, once we disturb the aircraft from its equilibrium location, position, so it tries to oscillate about that equilibrium, it has certain oscillatory motion, so it is a second order system, okay. So, I am trying to get back to that by raising this example. So, one easy way to visualize this is consider a second order system with a spring mass damper or a simple pendulum here. Right. Okay. So, let us say L be the length of this pendulum which is hang pivoted about point O prime and say and the weight of this bob which is uh, hanging at the bottom of this length L at the bottom of this length L is say mg, right, which is, which will be acting perpendicularly down, say. So, this is perpendicular to this ceiling, okay. And now, let us displace this object to a distance. So, in this case, the tension acting in this string is balanced by mg and we can say this is an equilibrium state, right, and it is at rest, it is not moving. Now, let us displace this bob by an angle theta. Right. So, say this is the displacement theta, right, L still remains same, is not it? So, m g is acting downward, right. So, when we displace this and if you leave it, we know it will try to move towards the initial equilibrium which is say O here, let it be O be the initial equilibrium and say O prime is a displaced, uh, so location at which, uh, o, o, yeah, O prime is a uh, geometric location that corresponds to this deflection theta, right. Now, when we leave it from O prime, the bob will try to come back, that mass will try to come back towards this equilibrium, right, and then it will try to oscillate about this equilibrium. So, what happens is it will try to oscillate about this equilibrium with time, right, is not it, Am I correct or not. So, let us say if this is the displacement So, this is the initial uh, of, so this is again my equilibrium location, equilibrium, right. So, if when I displace this pendulum, right, what happens is it will try to attain, try to come back towards this equilibrium, but will continue oscillating about that equilibrium until this disturbance damps out, right. Correct. So, such a motion where uh, which helps the system to come back towards this equilibrium with time, right, is known as dynamically stable system, right. So, that, that system with, with this motion, right, that helps to helps it to come back towards this equilibrium, we call it a dynamically stable system. So, this is dynamic, th this, this pro promotes this kind of motion promotes dynamic stability, right. It is why because see here the amplitude is 
this much. So, with time it is changing, here it is decreasing and here it is in opposite direction, right. So, if you see the maximum amplitude is significantly decreased compared to this particular location, right, the initial am amplitude. So, with time if this happens, if this ma amplitude keep decreasing with time, then we can say this is a dynamically stable system. And we, call, we can also notice, yeah, so let us let us move on to the second case as well. Let us say if there is a motor here which is otherwise once I displace this here uh, if I do not uh, allow this to damp otherwise if you are conducting this experiment in vacuum right where there is no air there is no resistance here why this is coming to rest is because of the air resistance. So, when we do not uh, when we do this experiment in vacuum it will try to oscillate am I correct? What happens is the same system when we place it in vacuum say in other words there is no friction at the pivot and there is no damping because of surrounding air molecules right. So, again this is displacement and this is time x axis is time and we have displacement on y axis let us let us denote it by y right. So, if I uh, displace it by an angle theta or say displacement here let us say theta right. So, by an angle theta So, when there is no dissipation of energy in the system, it will try to oscillate, right. So, the magnitude of oscillation or the amplitude of oscillation will remain constant since there is no dissipation with time, right. So, such a, so, the, so there is no dynamic, so the di dynamically it is unstable, right. Why? Because it is not coming back towards its equilibrium with time, is not it? So, it is trying to maintain the same energy or same amplitude all the time, right. There is no dissipation here. So, so what we call this as damped oscillations. So, for dynamic stability, we look at damped oscillations. For dynamically unstable system, so we is associated with undamped. damped oscillations right. Is that all? Is that all? Can we expect something else or these are the only two possible cases. So, for a pendulum it will be quite uh, non intuitive to uh, imagine a diverging motion right. Let us say if I uh, program this at the pivot with an oscillator with a motor right where the motors rpm or uh, the angular dis displacement keep increasing or say if I am adding energy to the system at e after each and every oscillation what happens is the amplitude of oscillation increases is not it. So, say I have initially displaced this by an angle from there if the energy once displaced from it if there is an addition in the energy, so the magnitude keep increasing it is like diverging right. So, this is like divergence. So, this is convergence is not it subsidence similar to that of subsidence there. So, the magnitude is decreasing in this case it is increasing in this case am I correct or not. So, this is like uh, can you see this like this is this is like uh, e power t, this is e power minus t similar to that is not it and superimposed by harmonic motion. So, the solution can be e power t times or e power uh, minus t times cos of omega t or sin of omega t multiplied by is not it. If you look at this particular signal, the solution can be yeah, you can guess the solution is not it. So, here uh, we call this uh, diverging oscillations correct. So, we K C is where we talked about diverging oscillations. So, the last two cases corresponds to 
dynamically unstable system, right? Whereas the first case corresponds to dynamically stable system. So, but if you carefully observe in all these cases, the system possesses static stability, isn't it? If you observe this, so after the displacement, say this is the equilibrium, it tries to come back towards equilibrium, isn't it? So even here it is trying to come back towards equilibrium. Here it is trying to come back towards equilibrium. The same thing here, right? So the system is trying to attain that equilibrium once it is displaced from the equilibrium, right? So it has that initial tendency. So even in this case, it's it's true, right? So this is our equilibrium. So the system is trying to move towards equilibrium, isn't it? And even here, it is the same. So even here, even here. So though it is an undamped oscillation, but still we can see the system is trying to ha system possess that initial uh, tendency to come back towards equilibrium. Am I correct or not? So consider this case as well. You have that initial tendency to come back towards equilibrium. Right? So, though the system is statically stable in all the three cases, we can't claim it is stable system. Why? Because it is not dynamically stable. So, static stability may not guarantee the stability of the system or may not guarantee the dynamic stability of the system. But when a system is dynamically stable, it guarantees the static stability. Right? That is what we noticed here, isn't it? The system here is dynamically stable. That means it guarantees static stability. In other two cases, the system is not dynamically stable, but still the system possesses static stability. So static stability may not guarantee dynamic stability, but dynamic stability guarantees static stability. Okay.